So there are two different ways you can go about solving a rate law problem. This is the first way, it's the easier way, it requires less steps. Um, the difference is that in this way, the slow step will be your first step, um, and there will be no intermediates in that slow step on the reactant side. So for a problem like this, it would tell you to figure out what the overall rate law is, based on the overall mechanism. So we would first have to find out what the overall mechanism is. Um, these are intermediates because they don't show up in the overall mechanism. So these can't show up in your overall rate law. Intermediates can never be in the final rate law. So that won't be an issue for this one because we're going to base our um, rate on the slow step, and these two reactants are, um, neither of them are intermediates. So finding the overall mechanism, we just add our two H's, H2s, bring down the NO, um, add our two waters, and bring down this N2. So this is our overall mechanism that we're trying to find the rate law for. Um, the general form of a rate law, remember that it looks like this. So it'll be the rate equals K times one of the reactants to its um, exponent and then times the other reactant to its exponent. And there can be more reactants, but this is just a general form. So in this case, it would be rate for this mechanism is going to be based on this. So rate equals K times H2 times NO. Now the thing that's important to remember is that you have to include the coefficients for these reactants as exponents. So the coefficient here is just 1, so we don't really have to write that. And then the coefficient for this one would be squared. So this is what the overall rate law looks like for this reaction.